Welcome to the Hindu News Analysis by Shankar A.S. Karmi. The news articles along with the page numbers are displayed here for your reference. The PDF link of the handwritten notes and the time stamping of the news articles is given in the description box as well as in the comment section. Now let us start our today's news analysis. This discussion is based on the FAQ on stagflation. So in this context we will be discussing about stagflation and why is it a problem for the Indian economy. The syllabus relevant for the analysis of this news article is highlighted here for your reference. Now you should know that the retail price inflation or retail inflation for December month of 2019 was at 7.35% and this is above the RBI's targeted range of 2 to 6%. Know that the inflation, that is the increase in price which is experienced at retail shops is known as retail inflation. This value gives the actual reflection of the price rise in the country. So in India, the inflation rate at retail level is estimated by the consumer price index. Now if you look at the reasons for rise in inflation rates which has been attributed mainly to the rise in the prices of vegetables such as onions. Now if you look at the news article it says that the December month retail inflation that is 7.3 percent is higher in the last six years and this is above the RBI's targeted range of 2 to 6 percent. Therefore this high retail inflation has increased the worries that the Indian economy may be headed towards stagflation. Now you should know about stagflation which is the combination of high rate of inflation and lower rate of growth. So at this time not only the inflation is higher but the unemployment rate is also higher. Now know that Indian economy has faced six consecutive quarters of slowing growth rate since 2018 and the most recent quarter that is the second quarter of current financial year that ended in September 2019 the growth rate was just 4.5 percent. This indicates that Indian economy is experiencing lower rate of growth and the main reason for this economic slowdown or lower rate of growth is the lack of sufficient consumer demand for goods and services. So in order to boost the demand the RBI was encouraged to cut the repo rates. Therefore repo rate was cut about five times in 2019 by the RBI. The RBI is encouraged to do so because as you know that if the repo rate is decreased that is the rate of interest that RBI charges from its clients on the short term borrowing. So when repo rate is higher it means that the bank loans are costly. In the same manner when repo rate is lower the bank loans are cheaper. So easy credit is available. This means that people can borrow easily and there will be more liquidity in the economy. So when there is more availability of money it will automatically increase the demand. So in turn it will boost the Indian economy. But what actually happened was in the second half of 2019 the prices of goods begin to rise at a faster rate. However the growth rate of the Indian economy continued to fall significantly. So here we can see that there is a high inflation and there is low rate of growth. This situation made many to believe that, that India may be sliding into stagflation. Now we will try to understand the situation based on Phillips curve which is a graphic curve which advocates a relationship between inflation and unemployment in the economy. So as per this curve there is a trade off between inflation and unemployment rate. That is there is an inverse relationship between inflation and unemployment. The curve suggests that lower the inflation higher the unemployment rate and higher the inflation lower the unemployment rate. So this inverse relationship between inflation and unemployment was seen as a confirmation of the hypothesis that inflation helps the economy to function at its full potential. So to understand the logic behind this hypothesis you should first understand what is meant by real wage on the nominal wages. Now we will see the difference between nominal wages and the real wages. In case of nominal wages these wages are expressed in a monetary form and they don't take the changes in prices into account. Whereas real wages are the type of wages that take inflation rates into consideration. Therefore the real wages determine the purchasing power of the individuals. That is it determines the amount of goods or services that the individuals can purchase based on the 
current market conditions. Now, the logic behind the belief is that inflation helps the economy to function at its full potential that is at least in short term. If there is inflation, the employer or companies may increase the wages by boosting the nominal wages. Therefore, these short term nominal wages may increase the additional demand in the economy. It also enables to hold the present employees and also additional employment opportunities would be created in the economy. That is why inflation helps the economy to function at its full potential. Now, at the same time, economists argue that an inflation rate beyond a certain level, that is at which the labor resources and other resources in the economy are fully employed, then at that level, there will be no employment benefits or growth benefits. That is why policymakers are often advised to maintain a certain inflation rate to ensure that unemployment is kept to a minimum level and the economy is operating at its full capacity. But according to the author of this news article, the simultaneous presence of higher rate of inflation and low economic growth under stagflation challenges the conventional view that inflation helps an economy to operate at a full capacity. So, in turn, it questions the validity of the Phillips curve, which mentions that there is an inverse relation between inflation and the unemployment rates. Now, we'll see that how the stagflation is a problem for the Indian economy. The stagflation is a problem because it ties the hands of the central government and the central bank from taking any counter cyclic policy steps increasing spending capacity in the economy. For example, this could be increasing the liquidity in the economy by cutting the interest rates or by other means by the RBI. This is because the greater spending is to revive the economy. But it cannot be done because as we saw that the retail inflation is already above the target range of RBI. So RBI will not reduce the repo rates. If RBI does so, then it will lead to a further rise in the prices and it will make things worse than the present situation. It is because this kind of situation leads to easy credit. That is, easy credit is also known as easy money. As the name implies that it is the easy availability of credit or money to the public. And when there is an increase in the supply of money into the banking system, it makes the money easily available for the public. So this easy credit is intended to increase economic growth, but it also leads to inflation. That is why further reduction in repo rate will further rise prices. Then the next problem of stagflation is that the slowdown in the growth rate could affect the income of the people. That is, when there is a high rate of inflation, it could cause a reduction in the people's standard of living. So these are the certain problems that arise due to stagflation. Now, we'll see what can be done to come out of this stagflation situation. Some economists suggest that policymakers should stop worrying about inflation and instead they should focus exclusively on boosting aggregate demand in the economy. They believe that the central bank should further ease its policy and the government should spend more on infrastructure and other service sectors to boost the economy. Also, some economists suggest that there should be supply side reforms to bring genuine economic growth rather than just injecting further liquidity into the economy. So these are certain suggestions suggested by economists to overcome the present situation of stagflation. So in this context, we saw about stagflation, then the difference between nominal wages and real wages. Then we try to understand the concept of Phillips curve. Then we have discussed about reasons for stagflation. Then also we discussed some of the suggestions suggested by economists to overcome, to come out stagflation situation. With this, we have come to the end of analysis of this news article. The displayed practice question will be discussed at the end of the session. Now, let us proceed to the next news article analysis. Now, let us see few news articles which discuss about a virus outbreak at Wuhan province in China. And this virus is called as novel coronavirus. This virus has been reported by China to the World Health Organization towards the end of 2019. So in this context, we'll be discussing about coronavirus, its signs, symptoms, 
treatment and other related details. The syllabus relevant to the analysis of this news article is highlighted here for your reference. See, coronaviruses are actually a large family of viruses and these viruses are known to cause illness which range from the common cold to more severe diseases such as Middle East Respiratory Syndrome and Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome that is SARS. Now, we will see about novel coronavirus which is a new strain of coronavirus that has not been previously identified in human beings. The Chinese researchers by using genome sequencing technique were able to identify the virus as novel coronavirus within a short span of time. Generally, coronaviruses are genotic viruses that is they transmit between animals and human beings. For example, Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome that is SARS coronavirus is thought to be an animal virus which probably spread from bats to other animals like civet cats and it first infected human beings in 2002 in China. Similarly, Middle East Respiratory Syndrome that is MERS coronavirus was transmitted from dromedary camels to human beings in 2012 in Saudi Arabia. Know that dromedary is an Arabian camel which is trained for riding or racing. Now, in case of novel coronavirus, its source has not been identified as of now. Now, let us see the clinical signs and symptoms of this coronavirus in human beings. Common signs of this viral infection include respiratory symptoms, fever, cough, shortness of breath and breathing difficulties, etc. Even in more severe cases, the viral infection can cause pneumonia, severe acute respiratory syndrome, kidney failure and even it can lead to death of human beings. When China reported the outbreak of this virus, many people were suffering from pneumonia and few people are also experiencing difficulty in breathing. It also reported that two people had died so far due to this viral infection. So this is about clinical signs and symptoms of novel coronavirus. Now we will see the mode of transmission of this novel coronavirus which is a genotic virus which can transmit from animals to human beings. Know that some coronaviruses can be transmitted from person to person, usually after close contact with an infected patient. WHO has said that there is a possibility of limited human to human transmission of this novel coronavirus. Now, this fact of transmission, that is transmission from human beings to human beings is important because there is every possibility that this virus will spread to other countries across the world because if you see that SARS coronavirus outbreak in China which happened in 2002 has killed nearly about 800 people across the world. Now, the Chinese New Year is nearing and Chinese nationals are expected to travel across the world. So, human to human transmission of this novel coronavirus is also possible. However, World Health Organization does not recommend any restriction of travel or trade as of now based on currently available information. However, India has issued a travel advisory asking citizens to follow certain precautionary measures while visiting China. Similarly, if you see the Tamil Nadu government has increased the surveillance and preventive measures to contain the spread of the virus. Now, coming to treatment, there is no specific treatment for disease which is caused by this novel coronavirus. However, many of the symptoms can be treated and therefore the treatment is based on patient's clinical condition. That is, if the patient have pneumonia, they can be treated with necessary medicines for pneumonia. Know that there is no vaccine available for this new novel coronavirus. So, we can say that there is no particular treatment for this novel coronavirus. Therefore, prevention is the best strategy. So, WHO has issued standard recommendations to prevent the spread of this viral infection. This includes regular hand washing, covering mouth and nose when coughing and sneezing, then eating thoroughly cooked meat and eggs. WHO has also recommended avoiding close contact with anyone who shows symptoms of respiratory illness such as coughing and sneezing. So, this is all you need to know about this novel coronavirus. 
See, Chinese researchers were able to identify the virus as novel coronavirus using genome sequencing. China shared the whole genome sequence data with WHO and it also submitted to the Global Initiative on Sharing All Influence Data platform. So, this step by China is significant because it will allow researchers across the globe to access the data. It will also help other countries to quickly identify the virus, then provide suitable care and also to develop specific diagnostic kits, drugs, even vaccination if it is required. Now, we will see in brief about Global Initiative on Sharing All Influence Data platform. This platform was launched on the occasion of the 61st World Health Assembly in the month of May 2008. It is a publicly accessible database designed by scientists for scientists in order to improve the sharing of influenza data. It helps researchers to understand how the viruses evolve, then spread and potentially become pandemics. Know that in 2010, Germany became the official host of this data platform initiative. So, to summarize this discussion, we saw in detail about the signs, symptoms and uh, treatment related to the novel coronavirus which was reported in Wuhan province of China. Then we also saw about global initiative on sharing all influenza data platform which is a publicly accessible database designed by scientists for scientists. With this, we have come to the analysis of this news article. The display practice question will be discussed at the end of the session. Now, let us proceed to the next news article analysis. This news article states that the Environment Ministry has exempted oil and gas companies from seeking prior environmental clearance for conducting explorations. So, in this context, we will discuss different category of projects then their significance while analyzing the news article. We will also see the stages involved in the process of obtaining prior environmental clearance for the developmental projects. The syllabus relevant for the analysis of this news article he is highlighted here for your reference. We should know that the industrial and other developmental activities in India are governed by keeping environmental protection and sustainable management in mind. The Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change has policies to promote integration of environmental concerns in developmental projects. So, in this regard, one such measure is that it has brought Environmental Impact Assessment Notification under the provisions of Environmental Protection Act of 1986. See, the present EIA notification is the Environmental Impact Assessment Notification of 2006. This notification has categorized the developmental projects into two different categories. These categories are called category A and category B projects. This categorization is based on section 4 of the EIA notification of 2006. The categorization depends on two things that is the size of the project. Then the other aspect is the degree of potential impacts on human health and natural and man-made resources. This categorization of projects can be seen in the schedule of the given notification. Now, let us see with respect to obtaining prior environmental clearance that is as per section 2 of Environment Impact Assessment which deals with requirements of prior environmental clearance that is as per this section 2 and section 4 of the notification all category A projects require a prior environmental clearance that is EC from the Union Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change. See, there is an expert appraisal committee for this purpose under Union Ministry who will appraise the category A projects. Then when it comes to category B projects, the prior environmental clearance is required at the state level that is from the State Environment Impact Assessment Authority. See, this authority at the state level shall base its decisions on the recommendations of a state or union territory level expert appraisal committee. So, here we can note that the environmental clearance process has been a decentralized process in the country. The two it is based on the category of different projects. Kindly know that when we say prior environmental clearance, we refer to getting clearance before any construction work or before the preparation of land by the project management authorities. 
So another process, the applicant will submit an application form along with pre-feasibility project report and this application will be made before commencing any construction activity or preparation of land. Then after receiving the application, generally there are four different stages that is in the process of obtaining prior environmental clearance for new projects. They are uh, called a screening, then scoping, public consultation and appraisal. Know that the process of screening is only for category B projects. The state expert appraisal committee will determine whether the project requires further environmental studies. Then such studies are for preparation of an environmental impact assessment for the appraisal. The projects requiring an environmental impact assessment report shall be termed category B1 and remaining projects shall be termed as category B2 projects. The projects categorized as B2 during screening will not require any environmental impact assessment report. Then the next stage is scoping. It is a process where the concerned appraisal committee will determine detailed and comprehensive terms of reference in order to address all relevant environmental concerns of the project. See, scoping may also include a site visit by a subgroup of the appropriate appraisal committee. Then the application for the clearance could be rejected at this stage of scoping itself. Scoping is carried out by the Central Expert Appraisal Committee that is EEAC for Category A projects and by the State Level Expert Appraisal Committee that is SEAC for Category B1 projects. Know that scoping is not required for Category B2 projects. Now we will see the next stage after screening and scoping. The next stage is public consultation. See this stage involves consultation with the affected persons of the proposed project. The consultation will be on the effects of the project on the affected persons. See usually public consultation is required for all category A projects and category B1 projects with some exceptions. The importance of this consultation is that the concerns put forward during the public consultation process must be addressed in the environmental impact assessment report and also in the environmental management plan. Then after public consultation the next and last stage is the appraisal stage. So in this stage there will be overall and detailed scrutiny of the final EIA report. This report which is detailed scrutiny of the final environmental impact assessment report is presented to central expert appraisal committee or state expert appraisal committee. So at this stage the concerned expert appraisal committee considers the environmental aspects of the proposed project. Then after this the committee makes its recommendations to the regulatory authority whether prior environmental clearance should be granted or not. Then based on the recommendations made by the expert appraisal committee, the prior environmental clearance may be granted by the Union Environment Ministry. And based on the recommendations made by the state level expert appraisal committee, the prior environmental clearance may be granted by the state level environmental impact assessment authority. So this is all about four stages in the process of obtaining prior environmental clearance for new projects. Let us come to the news article. It states that as per a recent notification by the Environment Ministry, the offshore and onshore oil and gas exploration projects conducted by oil and gas companies are shifted from category A projects to category B2 projects. So in the analysis we saw that category B2 projects are those projects that don't require an environmental impact assessment report and also these projects don't require scoping and uh, they also exempted from public consultation as per section 7 of the environment impact assessment notification of 2006. See such a shift in the categorization means that hereafter such oil and gas exploration projects are to be appraised by state level authorities. And therefore, such projects are exempted from the scrutiny of the Central Expert Appraisal Committee and the Union Ministry of Environment. Kindly know that only offshore and onshore oil and gas exploration is now moved to B2 
category whereas the offshore and onshore oil and gas development and production is still a category a projects so this change in the categorization for exploratory projects of oil and gas companies has raised concerns among the environment activists this change is considered as a dilution of regulatory oversight from the central government this is because it is being reported that the exploratory drilling on land would lead to destruction of agricultural fields whereas offshore drilling operations can affect marine organisms as they lead to building up of heavy water contaminants know that such projects may also deviate whales and sea life that rely on sonar for navigation offshore exploration projects have one another impact that such projects can make worse the risk of oil spills with this we come to the end of analysis of this news article in this analysis we saw about few important provisions of environment impact assessment notification of 2006 then the categories of projects and the stages involved in the process of obtaining prior environmental clearance then finally we saw the recent changes made by the union ministry of environment in the schedule of the environmental impact assessment notification with respect to the ex- exploration of oil and gas the display practice question will be discussed at the end of the session now let us move on to the next news article analysis this news article is with respect to the trade and investment relations between India and the European Union. In the analysis of this news article, we will discuss in brief about the bilateral trade and investment relations between India and the European Union. Then we will also discuss the need for the broad based trade and investment agreement. The syllabus relevant for the analysis of this news article is highlighted here for your reference. The news article presents the opinion stated by the Foreign Minister of Latvia which is one of the member countries in the European Union. The Latvian Foreign Minister stated that the broad based trade and investment agreement between India and the European Union could be signed in the month of March 2020. This is because Indian Prime Minister is scheduled to visit Brussels for the India European Summit in March 2020. know that india european union summits are supposed to be conducted annually and so far about 14 india european summits have taken place since the year 2000 the last summit was held in 2017 know that the first india european summit took place on 28th june 2000 in lisbon which is the capital city of portugal portugal is also one of the 28 members of european union the relationship between india and the european union was upgraded to the strategic partnership level in 2004 at the 5th india european summit which was held at the hague in netherlands know that at present there is no bilateral trade and investment agreement between india and the european union therefore the trade and investment relationship between india and eu could not be utilized or realized to the fullest potential kindly notice that the european union is india's largest regional trading partner in 2018 and india was european union's ninth largest trading partner in the same year then if you take the period from april 2000 to june 2018 the european union is the largest source of foreign direct investment for india in this period the investment inflows from european union accounts for about 24.38% of the total fdi since there is no bilateral investment agreement between india and european union therefore in the year 2017 an investment facilitation mechanism has been established for close coordination between india and the european union let us see few information with respect to the broad based trade and investment agreement see a commitment was made by political leaders of india and european union at the 7th india european summit for having a broad based trade and investment agreement the 7th india european union summit was held in helsinki in 2006 know that helsinki is in finland and finland is also a member of european union so it is based on this commitment made in helsinki The negotiations for the agreement was launched in the year 2007. These negotiations cover trade in goods and services, then investment, sanitary and uh, phytosanitary measures that is 
measures with reference to health of the plants or products before exporting etc the european union india btia is inconclusive because of wide range of issues like fixing tariffs rules of origin intellectual property rights etc in terms of ipr rights european union is asking india to adopt intellectual property protection standards more than what is required under trips agreement of wto so even after multiple rounds of negotiations there is no agreement yet to boost the bilateral trade and investment ties as committed by the leaders in 2006 so if this agreement comes into effect there will be huge investment coming to india from the european union region the investment will come with benefits of job generation and growth this will be beneficial at a time when india is facing slowdown in the economy then india will be able to export its food products and industrial products at reduced tariffs then european countries will be able to outsource it business to india and they may recruit skilled and talented indian professionals these are few implications of this agreement so we'll be discussing more about this agreement in the coming days with this we have come to the end of analysis of this news article now let us start our practice prelims question session this question is based on corona virus they have given four statements that is four options and you have to choose incorrect option option a says corona viruses are zoonotic viruses then option b says severe acute respiratory syndrome is a disease caused by corona virus then option c says human to human transmission of some corona viruses is possible then option d says vaccines are available for all types of corona viruses see all these statements are related to corona virus if you look at option a it tells that corona viruses are zoonotic viruses which is a correct statement because these viruses are known as zoonotic viruses that is they can be transmitted between animals and people know that corona viruses are actually a large family of viruses and these viruses are known to cause illness ranging from the common cold to more severe diseases such as middle east respiratory syndrome that is mers and severe acute respiratory syndrome see sars corona virus is thought to be an animal virus which probably spread from bats to other animals like civet cats and it first infected human beings in china in 2002 similarly MERS coronavirus was passed on from dromedary camels to human beings in Saudi Arabia in 2012 so we can see that coronaviruses are zoonotic viruses and the severe acute respiratory syndrome is a severe disease caused by a coronavirus so options A and B are correct options now if you look at option C it tells that human to human transmission of some coronaviruses is possible this statement is also correct statement because some corona viruses can be transmitted from person to person that is usually after close contact with an infected patient so option c is correct statement now if you look at option d it says that vaccines are available for all types of corona viruses see recently a novel corona virus outbreak was reported in china in wuhan province which is a new strain of corona virus know that it can take many years for a new vaccine to be developed for a particular disease therefore it is a novel corona virus that is a recently found virus and there is no vaccine developed as of now for this new strain of corona virus So option D which says that vaccines are available for all types of corona viruses is not a correct statement. So for this question you have to choose incorrect option that is option D is the correct answer for this question. Now look at this question which was asked in UPSC 2013 prelims examination. The question says that a rise in general level of prices may be caused by an increase in the money supply. a decrease in the aggregate level of output then an increase in the effective demand so for this question you have to choose correct answer using the course given for this question option d that is 1 2 3 is the correct answer because it's a direct application based question 
that is if you look at statement 1 it says that an increase in the money supply may cause rise in the general level of prices. This statement is correct statement because money supply in the economy may increase or may cause inflation. If you look at second and third statements which are also correct statements because a decrease in the aggregate level of output may also leads to increase of prices then an increase in the effective demand obviously rises in the general level of prices. So for this question option D is the correct answer. Look at this question which was asked in 2015 UPSC prelims examination that is with reference to the inflation in India which of the following statements is correct. Option A says that controlling the inflation in India is the responsibility of the government of India only. Then option B says that Reserve Bank of India has no role in controlling the inflation. Then option C says that decreased money circulation helps in controlling the inflation. Then option D says increased money circulation helps in controlling the inflation. So in the context of this question know that RBI and government both play a role in controlling the inflation that is often termed as the inflation targeting by the RBI. Therefore, option A and B are incorrect statements. Then if you look at option C, it says that decreased money circulation helps in controlling the inflation. Know that increased money circulation leads to increased inflation because it can increase demand. Therefore, the prices of the goods or services may increase. So in this context, RBI increases bank rates and SLR in order to reduce money supply in the market which controls demand therefore decreased money circulation helps in controlling the inflation. So for this question option C is the correct option. Consider this question. This question is with reference to Phillips curve. They have given four options and you have to choose correct option. Option A says it is the proportional relationship between inflation and employment. Then option B says it is the inverse relationship between inflation and employment. Then option C says that it is the proportional relationship between inflation and unemployment. Then D says it is the inverse relationship between inflation and unemployment. So this question is based on Phillips curve which is a graphic curve which advocates a relationship between inflation and unemployment in the economy. So you can eliminate options A and B because they talk about employment. Whether the relationship is proportional or inversely proportional, you should know that proportional means two quantities vary directly with each other that is if one increases other also increases. In case of inversely proportional if one quantity increases other decreases. So as per this Phillips curve there is a trade off between inflation and unemployment that is there is an inverse relationship between inflation and unemployment. This curve suggests that lower the inflation higher the unemployment and higher the inflation lower the unemployment. So for this question option D is the correct answer. Now look at this question they have given three statements and you have to choose correct statements. Statement 1 says that as per the environment impact assessment notification of 2006 all projects and activities are broadly categorized into two categories. Then second statement says that the process established by the above mentioned notification for obtaining prior environmental clearance is a centralized process. Then third statement says that recently all projects in respect of offshore and onshore oil and gas exploration and production are categorized as B2 projects by the Union Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change. So for this question you have to choose correct statements using the quotes given. Now if you look at the first statement that is as per the environment impact assessment notification all projects and activities are broadly categorized into two categories. This statement is correct statement because as per section 4 of the notification the projects are broadly categorized into two categories that is category A and category B projects. Now if you look at second statement it says that the process established by the above mentioned notification for obtaining prior environmental clearance is a centralized process. This statement is incorrect statement because the process of environmental clearance 
is a decentralized process that is for category A projects the prior environmental clearance is given by the union ministry on the recommendations of the central expert appraisal committee whereas in case of category B projects the prior environmental clearance is given by the state environmental impact assessment authority on the recommendations of the state level expert appraisal committee. So we can say that prior environmental clearance process is a decentralized process by the notification itself. Now if you look at the third statement it says that recently all projects in respect of onshore and offshore oil and gas exploration and production are categorized as B2 projects. This statement is incorrect statement because only offshore and onshore oil and gas exploration projects are categorized as B2 projects by the Union Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change whereas offshore and onshore oil and gas production and developmental projects are still categorized as category A projects. Further B2 is a B category of projects. These B2 category projects do not require the submission of uh, environment impact assessment report for the grant of prior environmental clearance and for such projects public consultation need not be conducted. So the given third statement is incorrect statement. So for this question you have to choose correct statements therefore option C one only is the correct answer for this question. Now consider this mains question which was asked in 2019. The question says that do you agree with the view that steady GDP growth and a low inflation have left the Indian economy in good shape. Give reasons in support of your argument. This is a 10 marks question and you have to write in 150 words. So for this question you can post your written answers in the comment section. Your posted answers would be evaluated and suitable feedback will be given in the reasonable time frame. With this we have come to the end of analysis of today's Hindi news analysis. If you like the video please do like, share, comment and subscribe Shankar IS Academy YouTube channel for daily updates. Thank you.